What will you do? Abby. Eight times twelve, okay. Ooh, we're gonna probably definitely need our tools for this one. Eight times twelve, that's gonna be a pretty big number, I think. Kendall? Ninety-six. Ninety-six, wow. That's a pretty big denominator. What do we do next? Do me a favor, ask mom or dad if they can pick yeah, up some guys, markers, you guys. Because we're losing markers for us, left and right three, up here. Three came in and two already went out. What do we do next? Go ahead. Twelve times one. Twelve times one, well that's easy. What is it? Twelve. Well, I know it's our other job. We have to do that cross. Oh, we have to go to the other cross, the other diagonal. And what does that give us, Kendall? Or Kendra, sorry. 40. Anybody see the problem? Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to take 40 away from 12. We know that if we set this up like this, that would be not possible. We wouldn't be able to do 12 minus 40. We have to be so we have to, exactly, we have to regroup. So we're going to take one of our holes away, which is going to leave us with? What? What does that leave us with? Six. Six. Okay. Now what do we do? We're going to take that hole, that one hole that we just, we're going to regroup it. What should we add? We, we had 12. What should we add, do you think? In this cut. With our, new, with our new denominator. And it kind of goes against everything else that we teach you for subtraction when we ungroup and regroup, because usually we always regroup a 10, right? But that's not the case for this. So what would we regroup? What do you think? The 40. Or the 6. <gasps> Wait, one point. Normally we'd say we'd regroup the 8. Eight, eight eighths. But remember, that one hole is worth eight eighths. But remember, what was what's our new denominator? Uh, twelve. Oh, 12. No, ninety six. You have to add ninety six and twelve. Yeah. Wow. Oops. That, how much is that going to give us? Eight. Nine and one is ten. 108. That's a big difference, isn't that? We're going to talk about how we can solve this problem another way, though. And it might not, it's not going to be quite as large with numbers, but this is one way. So now our subtraction sentence is 108 minus 40. Who can help us out? Who can help us out? Where do we start? This is a basic subtraction problem. Where do we start? Uh, Abby. Eight. Yeah, you start in the ones place. Eight minus zero is? Eight. Zero minus four, we can't do it. And then in the tens place, our new problem is ten. Take away four is six. So our new... So we would have 68, 96, and it kind of pains me to put that big of a number up there. So can we find 68 and 96 anywhere on our chart? Yeah. Who can go that extra step? Wait, what was it? 68 and 96, who can go on that chart and find that? And you might have to go to your bigger one too. If you look on the big one and you follow the fours, I'll give you a hint. You follow the fours. And guys, uh, these are both what we call even numbers, aren't they? Aren't those even numbers? So we know we know two will work. Two for will sure. work if they're both even. Every time two will work. Go 
But what if we go a step farther and we look at the fours? Yep? What's our new numerator? If fours are a divisor, if fours are... 17. 17. Wow. So that's how many times 4 goes into 68. Good. What about for 96? Who could chase that, that 4 column all the way down until you get to 96? I think it should be on there. It's going to be big. Yeah? 24. 24s. Guess what? That is, that's done. Because 17 and 24 do not share another factor. They're called factors. The only way we can make 17 is 1 times 17. That's the only way we can make 17. Now, are we completely done with the whole problem, though? Yeah. No. no. What do we need to finish it up with, Riley? Yeah. And that gives us? Two. two. So our answer would be 2 and 17 24 Now, there's another way we could tackle this problem. And that is we could, and some of you do this really well, we could list the multiples or the skip counting for 8 and 12 and see if we can find a smaller common denominator between 96 because we discovered it got pretty large, didn't it? And we got the problem done, but can we find an easier way? So help me out with my 8s. If you need to use your tools, use your tools. Help me count by 8s. Go ahead. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. Let's stop there. What about by 12s? What are we passing, you guys? What? Okay, who has whose notebook? Okay, Policia should have Policia's notebook. Where's your notebook? Where? His, is, his, all of his math stuff is missing. With the exception of his math workbook. You have your math note workbook, Chase? I mean notebook, like your notebook, with all those ideas in it. Okay, let's count by 12s. Go ahead. 12, 24, 36. Oh, I heard a stop somewhere there. Someone told me to stop. Ooh, do we stop? Yeah. 12? No, 12. 24? Yeah. 24. So our new fractions, our new denominators are 24. Well, what did I do to get from 8 to 24? 1, 2, 3. Times 3. What did I do to get to 24? 2. 1, 2. And we know from like the, one of the very first days of math class that whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. Okay, let's count by two. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not a times two, Mr. Amson. That's a times three. And what, is, what is one times three? Three. Okay. What is five Ten. times two? Ten. So our new problem is three twenty-fourths minus 10 24. So what do you think about that? Our new fraction is 3 24 minus 10 24. Oh, well, that's easy, Mr. Adamson. We can just do 3 minus 10, right? That's 7. Does that work out? 3 minus 10, that's 7. That's how I would do it, right? Right. 3 minus 10? That, yeah. that makes sense, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh. No, oh. Because 3 is smaller than 10. Oh, oh man. Th I would have gotten that wrong. Because we remember, right? we must have a larger value on top. We can't do it. Oh, so man. remember, we go back to our hole, which was 7. And same idea. We take one away, and we regroup it. What are we going to add to our 3? 10? Oh. 100? 24. 20, why oh, 24, yes. Madison? That's because that's our denominator. Now, why wouldn't we do 8, Madison? Because that's your old that's Yes, old that's your old one. You don't worry about that. Once you change 
These fractions, you don't worry about any of the old fractions. Remember, eighths and twelfths, they can't even talk together. Yeah. They're not allowed to talk together. They don't even know each other's language. Now they have a common language of 20 fourths. Now we can do the work. So basically what we did here is we took one whole and we said, all right, we need 24 pieces. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. We took that one whole and we cut it up into 24 pieces. And we have the whole thing, which means we have 24 24 fourths. So that's what we're going to add. What is 3 plus 24? 27. 27. You know what? The people that are paying attention right now, yeah. I bet they're going to be really successful at this. Because this is tough, they're guys. They're going to do a great job at this. This is, this, is a, this, is a, this is a whole step up from what we've been doing. Yeah. Now, can we take 27 24 minus 10 24 Yeah. Absolutely. Our denominators are the same, so we're just going to subtract our numerators. 17. So what do we get when we subtract 27 minus 10, Chase? Seventeen. And then we keep our denominator the same. Twenty fourths. Then we subtract our whole number. Six minus four is. Six minus four. Two. Two. Oh, that's interesting. Man. Do they look alike? Yes. Same answer. Two different ways to get there. And do you guys see how Mr. Adamson showed you both of the ways that we've been doing this whole last two week, uh, three weeks of math? You can list all the numbers out because I know all of you guys have different strategies and some work better for uh, one person and one, per one strategy may work better for the other. List these numbers out if, if, you, if you need to. You know, I know some of you like to do that and that's totally okay. But here's the thing is... 68, 96, that's a pretty yeah. big fraction. That's a pretty sloppy fraction. It's, it's almost too big to work with. That's why it's super important that we get it down Simple. smaller and simplify it. So you can go the multiplication route, mm -hmm. like what we did first, but you need to make sure that you're going to go into your toolbox, and you're going to have to make this that big fraction into a smaller equivalent fraction. Now, are 17 24 and 68 96 the same amount? Yeah. Are they? Are they equivalent? Yeah. All we, we divided by 4. We divided 68 by 4 and we divided 96 by 4 and that's how we got this. But I guess I would ask the question this this pie up here has 24 slices. Imagine if that same pie had 96 yeah. slices. We're getting pretty teeny tiny, aren't we, with our little fraction pieces. So I guess I just encourage you guys, if you do do the multiplication, you're going to have to go to your toolbox every time. See, this, this helps you find the lowest common denominator. So you know if you have the lowest one in common here, you're done. So that's where there's pros and cons to both of these strategies. Some, it may work better for this, but some, it may work better for the other way. Let's, let's try to tackle one more of these together, and then we will um, have some practice time. So what was the next problem that I asked you to skip? Number problem three? No, problem 12. Problem 12? Okay. Can someone read that to me? Three. Ooh, it's a good one. Three minus one and seven elevenths. Ooh, I like these. Ooh. We actually kind of talked about a problem similar to this, remember? This was a problem where the soccer team walked into the pizza shop and yeah. didn't have any pizzas cut yet. So what do you do? If we don't have any pizzas cut yet, so you have three whole pizzas cut, uh, uncut. What do we do here?
think about that, guys. Imagine it's Thanksgiving. Your family's ready for dessert. Nobody's cut the pies yet. What are you going to do? Cut the pie. Cut the pie. Cut the pies, cut the pies. now. What, what should we cut our pie into right away? Should we just cut it into fourths? No. That's easy. Yeah, just call it done. What do we cut it into, Adriana? Eleven. <gasps> eleven. Yes. yes. So you would cut this one into, pretend this is just eleven. <laughs> That's eleven, okay? Imagine. So we're taking this away. What would this three be turn into now? One, two, a two. two. Okay. Now what would? Now what's our fraction over here? Because we're splitting it up and we're moving it into the fraction, not a whole, right? So what would be transferred over here? Would be eleven. So what would what would the fraction be? Think about that. Eleven. Tyriana, you're on the right track. What what is it? Eleven. It's a full pizza or a full pie. Eleven. Eleven. Wait, who said? I heard a lot of people say. Yeah, wait, I, I, I'm hearing a lot of people. Madison, what did you say? 11-11. 11 11 because it's a whole, right? It's just no matter what. If we have three over three, that's a whole. 11 11. We're moving a whole over here. So this would be 11 over 11. Do you guys understand how we got that? Yeah. It's one thing if we only took part of this whole that was split into it. But we're taking this whole one that we cut, and we're moving it over here, 11 over 11. Oh, now this looks familiar. It looks like we can do something here. I want you guys to all figure out now, because this is something we've talked about, and I think you guys should be able to do. Okay? We, we did the hard stuff. We did the regrouping and the ungrouping. Get out uh, on your marker boards, and I want you guys to figure fi uh, finish this. I encourage you, though. Don't go straight to all the work. Think about maybe, maybe you don't have to do all that crazy stuff. And guys, do we need to go through all the extra work here of do we have a Sandlot common denominator? Yes. Oh, so that means we don't have to do anything else, do we? We just have to finish it up. Good. Adriana, come on up here and show us how you what you did. If any of you are still working, can those fractions talk the same language? Yeah, they, they're already compatible. You don't have to go through all that extra work to make them compatible. They already are. What do we do here, Adriana? Oh, I did, um, 11 Excellent job. Who agrees with Adriana? Me. Give me a thumbs up if you agree with her. Yes, this is correct. Can you put somebody on the spot, Mr. Lyncher, and uh, if they don't agree where where they went? Yeah. Okay, who doesn't agree? It's okay if you don't, but we just want to know. And did anybody not agree? I'll back up the boat, though. Mr. Lyncher asked how many people agree, and I would say about half of them. Yeah, I didn't see. said, yeah, I agree. And now that we're asking the people that don't agree to say, hey, let's talk about it, nobody is disagreeing now. And that's okay if you don't agree. We want to just know what you did, and maybe you could teach us, or maybe we could help you figure this out. Who doesn't agree? Adonis, do you agree? All right. Yeah. Okay, so let's make sure we're active participants yeah. in our learning then. Okay. And this is the correct answer because we what Adriana did, she took eleven minus seven and that equals four. And what all stays the same throughout this whole problem? Your denominator. Your common denominator. Excellent. Alright. Uh, let's let's head back to the carpet for a moment. 
Sit on the sit on the floor, on the carpet, not on the chair, please. Can you bring your whiteboard? Nope, you don't need to bring your whiteboard.